Algis Huxley, the well-known novelist and thinker, stated, the Inquisition burns and tortures in order to perpetuate a ritual and an ecclesiastical, political, financial organization as necessary to man's salvation. We atheists know that this wretched religion's corruption certainly stemmed in part from its foundation on a lie, a fantasy of Jesus' putative death and resurrection, which was supposed to assure ours. The foundational myth soon crystallized into an ecclesiastical, political, financial organization that promised man happiness in heaven as it robbed him of it on earth. Some historians have raised a compelling question in view of the horror and violations of the Inquisition, the Holy Wars, and other atrocities of the Church. If what the Inquisitors did was to preserve Christianity, was Christianity worth preserving? My personal answer is no. Christianity was not worth preserving, nor any other religion. Christopher Hitchens spoke very concisely for the secular community when he titled his 2007 anti-religious volume, Religion Poisons Everything. I rest my case temporarily. As I have spoken about the heinous effects of religion in many of my lectures, and I can assure you I will be speaking more on the topic in future lectures. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, very Thank you everybody, much. for listening to this very long lecture. Sorry. Okay, I have two questions. Just for you said a word in the first or second page of your reading that I have no freaking idea what you said. And I want to know what the word is. Okay. Something, and I, I spelled it phonetically, sacerdotal? Sacerdotal. That's just a sacred or belonging to the clergy or whatever. Okay. That's, that's, How do you spell it? that's easy. S A C E R D O T A L. Let me check and make sure. Close enough. S A C E R D O T A L. Okay. Yeah, that's all it means. So, say, uh, say, okay. yeah. so when I said that the ruler had lost his quasi sacerdotal that means like quasi sacred, sacred position yeah. okay then my next question if it's okay is i don't have many oh yeah i um you threw out two groups of of that i'm completely unfamiliar with and i actually did read a lot at one point on the gnostics okay Cathars? That's a new Panthers, yeah, they were they were somewhat like the Gnostics. But they was, weren't a sect of the Gnostics. Uh, no, but okay. they were like almost a, a derivative of, you know, I'm sure that those ideas floated around and they picked so them up. So where did they come from and what's the, I, I don't know. Anything you know, about actually, I, you know, I can't tell you exactly where they came from. Well, I'm going to look that Would they call themselves Christian? Well, they did. You know, early Christianity was... Um, it was made up of so many different groups of thinkers. You know, the church always pretended that all this doctrine was laid down from the exactly beginning, from the beginning, it was not, when actually it took centuries to develop. So these people um, just had these different ideas, and this is very similar to the Gnostics, where the um, you had that um, what do you call it? Oh God, I can't Demiur remember the name. Uh, the the, oh, they were the Demiurge. Demiurge. The Demiurge. And they were Russian, so they were the Eastern Orthodox type. Okay, that's probably where they probably came from. The Bogomilians then. And that's the Wald Waldensians. Waldensians. The Waldensians. Yeah. Okay, I'd never heard of that one either. That was my second question. That was a very that was a very big group. They were, you know, and the church did not like anybody that. Um, <laughs> Criticized, you know, their their growing wealth. They they wanted to get back to the what they thought was the poverty and the you know piety and the early things of the church, which were like what maybe one day or whatever. The, later on, um, a group of the Franciscans also fell afoul of the church because of that. They were like a very fundamentalist group, and they were called the Spirituals. Okay. And uh, they went to the stake very fast. <laughs> really well, Anytime you criticize, you know, wealth and growth of the church, and yeah. you know its buildings and its accumulation of things, you were you were probably in trouble. Did I hear you correctly that one of the original of the medieval Inquisition model was Saint so and so? Saint Jesus? Francis de Assisi? No, you listed two names of when you, we were talking about um, 
the medieval, and you're talking about they started writing up the the model, the procedure, whatever you want. To oh say. no, that yeah, uh, you yes, said one was that was yeah. Wait a minute, hold on, and I'll find it. I'm just on. So they the canonized someone who created an institution. They canonized a lot of people. If yeah. you'll look at the history of the church. I mean, well, but I mean, they, you mean a lot of people that were involved in the Inquisition? Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Can they yes. uncanonize people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we go back and say, no? No, because they've had what three miracles that they <laughs> the church it. has authenticated. Oh. Okay. We saw a dreadful movie like that at the uh, DFT. Remember? Oh yeah. That looked like it was going to be skeptical about miracles, and by the end, it turned Terrible. into. You know, like, oh, maybe they really happen, you know, and how, how strongly the church, you know, investigates these things, you know. Mm -hmm. And the Waldensians still exist, huh? Interesting. They do? Yeah. There's the Waldensian Evangelical Church. They're active in Europe, South America, and North America. Mm. And, and there's an American Waldensian Society that exists to maintain the history with the declared goal very of good. proclaiming the Christian gospel. I wouldn't think that they're very... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I read somewhere there were 35,000 uh, divisions, or what do they call them? Denominations. Denominations, Denominations. of Christianity. So 35,000, it's all they can do just to find enough words to name themselves. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't right. know how, and then they say, well, we do this thing a little different, so mm -hmm. yeah. that makes yeah. us better than all the others. That's and, interpreting the Bible, mm -hmm. usually. And that's why we get the First Avenue, the Second Avenue. Baptist Church. Baptist or Lutheran yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, was the term atheist used as a prosecute in by the prosecution in terms of uh, prosecuting these uh, so-called heretics? Did, did they say, well, you don't believe in God? They did remember. Remember when I gave that, um, have I given that talk yet? Maybe I've written so many now. They, they used atheism. Yeah, remember when... Uh, I was trying to like make a case that perhaps atheism was uh, more prevalent than we realized in the earlier centuries. That's yeah, because uh, yeah. Uh, scholar, some scholars had said that atheism could not have existed before the 17th century. About the 17th century, and I was trying to make a case from other scholars who said that it had. So once in a while they would mention atheism or not believing in God. It wasn't to their advantage to do that, though, you know, because it would put ideas in people's heads. So that's why we think that there probably were atheists, because why would they mention something that didn't exist? But usually the people were put up for uh, heresy, uh, blasphemy, or uh, apostasy. And usually heresy and apostasy were inter intermixed, yeah. which they shouldn't have been, but they were. But those terms didn't accuse you of not believing in God. Usually they didn't, although there are some cases on record. Well, that's what I'm interested in, is, is that how was that term used? Was it used to just denote a Okay, I'm trying to remember really which, lecture, which lecture was that. Do you remember, Jim? You can go back in that, Norm, and see that, because I have a whole section. Not, but it wasn't, uh, it doesn't sound like it was used as someone who truly did not believe in God, but didn't believe maybe in the Christian God. No, it would be used as not believing in not God. Believing it was God. used, but mm -hmm. very seldom. It was really seldom. That's why it's so wonderful to find that, to find those words in those accusations, because then you say, well, hmm. you know, that's what the histor some of the historians on our side are saying, then why did they accuse people of atheism if they really weren't? I mean, why would you make a point out of it? Why would you have the word? Yeah, so, why would you say it? Why would so you're you say saying, it? but there are some cases where it tru they truly were claiming to be an atheist. Yes. We understand. Yes. But or someone claimed they were an atheist. Yeah. Say for sure. Okay. <laughs> we don't know. We really don't know. But there's certainly a lot of evidence mm -hmm. for it. I'm trying to remember what, which um, lecture was that. Well, I can't put my finger on it. It seems like it didn't matter if you, rem if you believed in different things or nothing. You were all categorized as the same guy. You weren't believing in Christianity, so well. Yeah, if you didn't else. believe in, in certain things that the church laid down at certain periods, that specific church. yeah, yeah that's of right. doctrine, the doctrine mm -hmm. that the Universal Catholic Church, as it were, laid down. Yeah. It took years to formulate mm -hmm. all this. And it you were you were in a lot of trouble, you know, especially this idea of a demiurge, an <coughs> evil god or or a mistaken god who created the universe. 
I, I, is there anything in the, st the research that gives any kind of a statistic that helps indicate how much of it was really about, I mean, it was a cover most of the time. It was exactly what you said to, you know, oh, this guy's against me. I need to get rid of him so I can get his land. Oh, yeah, there was change. a lot of things. Lot of so is there any mm -hmm. kind of statistic? Is there any? Because we wouldn't know. It's almost impossible. Yeah. You know, I mean, I suppose some people... I mean, yeah. how much of it was pure, I really believe this is heresy versus, <laughs> wow, here's a good way to... Well, this is it. This is it. That's why people turned in their neighbors and their right. you know, old grudges and what have you and, you know, turned in somebody so they would, you know, look like they were purer than and, the And other. I thought, like you, I didn't think the atheism was ever even in there. I thought it was really just about... One, it's just once in a while. I'm sorry, I can't remember which lecture because I've gone into it. Um... Berman, the, uh, the atheist historian, has done a, like a superb job. And also in that, unfortunately, which I can't remember, in that lecture, the bib has the book. And he, they have a lot of scholars that have contributed to these ideas. It was on the history of atheism. Was the Are you sure that that was in the history of atheism? No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. You should be able to do a search anyway on the website. I'll it. check it out. But In the meantime, you might look at the history of atheism because I think I did a good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason it's important is because it was used as a derogatory term for someone who just didn't believe as you believed. Not that if they would, you really didn't believe in God, but you just were a bad believer well, yeah. in something else. Yeah. And they labeled you an atheist. But what the, because, what the historians are looking for, though, or our, our atheist historians that we're looking for are actual atheism where the they were accused of not believing in God. Yeah. And you're claiming there are some of those. But that's what Berman claims and other but, other historians. But it wouldn't have even been that important to the uh, inquisitors because if you believed in another God, it would be just as bad oh, yeah. as oh, not yeah. believing okay. in any God. Oh yeah. You're right. outside yeah. of doctrine. Or if you yeah. believed remember now there were like they were fighting the, the nature of the Trinity forever. And remember the Arians said that Jesus didn't have the same nature that God had created him. And the Athanasians won. <laughs> and they, they said that, you know, all three people of the Trinity had the same nature. And if you, if you said that Jesus had been created by God, you could end up on, on you know, being burned if you, you know, or, or at least certainly severely punished. That was heresy. There were all kinds of ways to commit heresy. And were women targeted during this? Oh period? yes, the women also. Okay. Oh yeah. And what if what if you simply didn't go to church on Sunday? Would you be targeted? That was a real bad idea. Not good. I don't Wasn't think... church compulsory in most of those things? I mean, well, as you can laws, see, that you can see that for a while people didn't even go to mass, and in many cases, remember as I said, there was no, no priest. priest in that area. But that would have but, been a very small Yeah, town. in probably rural areas. Yeah. But I'm saying in a town situation, I thought there were compulsory laws. Well, I don't, it was, I think it was expected of you. I mean, if you were a good Christian, you'd go to church. Well, yeah. you mentioned yeah. one of them that, yeah. it, that you'd have to go to confession once a year. Yeah, yeah. that was the Tridentine. Uh, yeah, that was the Tridentine in. It was just what like year a preacher being able to read a torn bodice novel. Yeah. You know, <laughs> where everyone sends. <laughs> From the Tridentine Council. Maybe I can find it back here. Yeah, and, the, and the concept of whether or not there were atheists throughout all history. And I know we, I think the first time I was here, we talked about what was the rough percentage of atheists through time, um, and that it probably hasn't changed a whole lot. I kind of really believe that saying, I don't know which president said it, that you can fool. All of the people. Some of the people, some, <laughs> some of the time, and all of the people, some of the time. They can't fool all the people all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's always seems to me that it would be a universal truth through history. So if you can't fool all the people all the time, you've always had atheists, no matter what they call themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that too, but it's hard to know for sure. So it says here that there was mandatory, at least in England, um, it was enforced by the Corporation or the Corporation Act of 1661 and the Test Act, which basically was, if you wanted to hold any office or be in business or be a member of a guild, you had you had to, you could not do that without taking the annual. Well, that sacrament. year was what year was that? that was Sixteen. Later. Sixteen. Wow. That was when that was when the the um, English took up the heresy, 
act very strongly, and that was when they established certain um, rules that were like very draconian. But did Britain have an Inquisition? Um, yeah, they, they, they did. did. They did, but it was, they took it up late. And it didn't last forever. Yeah. Well, well, it Queen lasted Mary. a long time. Queen Mary had it. Oh, yeah, they, it lasted yeah, a long was, time. Wait, not as long as... Not as long as the Spanish Inquisition, but in England, when England took up heresy, they took it up with a vengeance. <laughs> I thought it went back and forth um, for a while there, depending on Catholic or Protestant, whoever got to be in charge. No, it was it was established before then. No, I know, but I... It came back in... What am I trying to say here? It was sick. Like. Well, yeah, yeah, they were, it was Catholic yeah. versus Protestant for a long time. It was there, but prior, there went. But prior to that, it was like Catholic. Yes. And it, it, they became very draconian. But that must was, have been in the era of Catholicism in Britain. Yeah, before, in before Henry expelled, before Henry. The, right. <laughs> expelled the things that uh, turned to the uh, Protestants. You know, you know, if I could just kind of outline kind of what I got out of the whole darn thing here. Sure. Is that we all started out, the church was a powerful, profitable institution, and they were losing control. The people, as you put it, they didn't really serve the people. The church no longer served them. They sold stuff. They, it was kind of like taxation without representation. I mean, the people were supposed to support the church, but the church wasn't giving stuff back. They were just sucking it up. And so they were losing membership, losing power, losing profitability, and they started applying pressure to the population, forcing you to be sure. sure. Essentially, they started these uh, Inquisition terrorist camps for sure. training. They really were. It sounds to me like they were terrorist camps. Sure. Yeah. And, and it certainly isn't to diminish the personal hells that a lot of people went through. But it, in the macro sense, it's just the motion that's always been going on. It goes on now. Pressure is applied from those with power and profit and whatever uh, onto other people. So but in the secular that, countries, yeah. there's at least they don't burn you. They might, pre you know, prevent you from earning a living, imprison you, or, or mm -hmm. imprison yeah. you, or ruin mm -hmm. your reputation. But so the way they wreck your life is a different. Yeah, it's, it's different. But I think I would rather have my reputation ruined than be burned, you know, at the stake or be tortured, yeah. you know. And, you know, at least in the secular West, we're not doing that. Now we have a different situation. As of today. Yeah, as of that, today. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. That to me almost seemed to be like a fundamental, it's like when you talk about fluid flows or something, there's this fundamental principle and pressure. And it seems, it's, again, it's always been going on. I don't want to feel, sound fatalist, like we can never end war or we can never mature as a population. But this is essentially the same story that the Nazis had and the same story that the church had and the same story. Anybody with the power but and the profit and Now it's pressure. a little bit better in the secular West. I mean, it's just like people used to say that, you know, well, of course we still have slavery, but now it's like, you know, a term of opprobrium. You know, you're not supposed to do it. Yeah. Whereas it was natural and it was, you know, justified in the Bible. So we are kind of maturing as a species? Slight, and slightly and very slowly, slowly, I think. And maybe an uh, increased Back movement to Star Trek. for... That's what they... <laughs> Back right? to the Inquisition. <laughs> um, I think uh, the well, Inquisition actually, was a Greg reaction... Was, talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was a reaction to the threats that the Catholic popes perceived, and some of sure. them were real and some of them were imaginary, yeah. to, towards their power and their rule. Yeah. And at that time, they could exert a tremendous amount of physical intimidation and killing, right? You know, against people, right? Um, Membership drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, any you're right, anyone in power. But in during that period of time, it, it took on this particular ugly form, you know, of torture, of burning, um, you know. And I, I have some more questions about that. But it, it, in this particular era, you know, the Dark Ages, it was particularly ugly. Um, I wanted to know about the uh, excommunication that you mentioned. How early were they excommunicating people? Was that a very early phenomenon, or is that began, did that begin in the, during the Inquisition? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. I would think that they were doing it earlier. They used to toss people out all the time. I remember reading about the early church uh, divines 
and they were they were always arguing that so how can you say so and so is not a good archbishop because he uh, threw out so and so who was um, you know so there was a, there was a form of excommunication now, I don't know on. if it was called excommunication. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't uh, Cain excommunicated? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's been going but on there was very there was one. very early in the in the early days of the church there was a lot of throwing out of people who weren't adhering to whatever was the doctrine at that minute. At what point do you think that it just became paranoia that was happening, um, you know, beyond the, the, the real threats that, you know, there were these other belief systems that were being, uh, you know, the, you mentioned the Cathars and the others. I think, you know how many, I, I just, what I just did, uh, just finished heresy, and I can't tell you how many, <laughs> you know, the, the lecture, it's all the way next year, but anyway, I can't tell you how many heresies there were. And that's the point, I mean, that's one of the reasons that the church went wild. I mean, they were trying for only 300 years to wipe these things out. Yeah, but... And they kept springing up. But some of it was real, so if you look at yeah. it just from the pure Machiavellian point of view of keeping power, you would want to suppress any competing views. Sure. But at some point, it sounds like, from what you described, it became just this pure paranoia of you're mad now you're imagining threats to your power, like Stalin did. Yeah. But there was well, there constant. was that mix. There was that mix with the church. Some, you know, some of it was imagined and some of it was, was real. I mean, you know, the Protestant Reformation was very real. Yeah. And they could not stem the tide there. I mean, you know. Well, why know. not? Why? Why couldn't they? Printing. I think you pretty much said it with the printing. The printing Once class, knowledge was out left. Yeah, that the, was the out German. Of the, the German princes were they kind of sick of the of the, the, of the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, so they started to extend pr protection to the Protestants that, that came through there to preach, and people, you know, converted. It was, it was very strange. Struggle. Yeah, it was a. St and then that was the Thirty Years' War <clears throat> that ended, I think, in sixteen forty-eight or thereabouts. And that was, well, there was political and financial um, difficulty there, but a lot of it was Catholic versus Protestants. Mm -hmm. Until they had the Treaty of Westphalia, they didn't have, um, they, they, did, they, wouldn't, they didn't stop fighting. Germany was like, it took years to, to recover economically. You know, in your, uh, in your description, though, having a hundred ways to condemn somebody, yeah. all those rules and laws. horrible? It seems to me that that was a, a, a plausible deniability for, again, seizing property and money and power and knocking off, you know, any opposition. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't, and I have no reason for saying it, I don't really believe a lot of the guys in power believe. I don't think a lot of the guys up on stage preaching, I don't think they really believe it. I agree with you. And Yeah, I don't think so And either. so all those tools... <laughs> were just <coughs> plausible deniability for continuing to maintain power. Sure. And not all the time. I mean, I know there's some people who really have swallowed well, yeah, the root I mean, pill all the way. How can you tell the difference anymore between those yeah. who believe and those who don't, you know? I think some of those the examples you gave of some of those inquisitors, I think they were strong believers. They, they, I don't... Somebody might have sold them, didn't believe it up here, <laughs> sold them a bill of goods that it was all about protecting Catholicism, but I think... the. A lot of them believed it. Some did, but I think some didn't. Have you ever read Dostoevsky's Brothers Karamazov? There's a wonderful section <clears throat> called The Grand Inquisitor. And he doesn't believe at all. Jesus comes back to earth and he orders him arrested right away. <laughs> oh, right after the Inquisition, you know, right after the burning <clears throat> in order to faith. And then um, Jesus never speaks in this, in this section. And... Um, the Inquisitor explains to him that, you know, he tried to give men freedom and stuff, and they really don't want that. Mm -hmm. And he really makes it very clear that he doesn't believe at all. The Grand well, Inquisitor. Sure lots of Read it. It's, it's short, and it's, a, it's really very interesting. It's a very, um, actually, Dostoevsky was a really extreme anti-Semitic orthodox. And he hated the Catholic Church, so this is his condemnation of the Church. But it goes for all religion, really. But he was still a Christian. Oh, very much a Christian, yeah. Well, well, yeah, he was an Orthodox, you know, like a Sorry. Russian Orthodox. And anti-Semitic. Very anti-Semitic, it, it appears. When I first started reading him, I had no, no, you know, idea of that. It's come out mm -hmm. in recent years.
Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, though, for the inquisitor to question Jesus, that's a real career limiter. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, he lets him go at the end, but he tells him not to come back. You know, because there's your second back. coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he knows that there's no second coming. Exactly. I mean, yeah. he knows that. You know, the, the burning of books did that become just the substitute for burning people? Well, they burn or? people too sometimes. Sometimes I remember uh, in some of the books on the Inquisition that. Um, where they would like burn the heretic with his books, wow. chain to him. <laughs> you know? Like, okay, we got every every possible copy, but you know there was always another copy somewhere. somewhere. See, yeah, they they tried their best, but you know what? You can't stem the tide. You know, no. once it starts, and they went insane. I mean, it's really what it was because they kept getting all these heresies. When, when I was studying heresy, <laughs> I realized how many, you know, heresies there were. And I said, my gosh, they, you know, it was continuous. It's just like now when we talk about all these churches that form on one little point. Uh -huh. Well, these heretics would form, but they really believed it. And they were willing to go to the death, to be tortured, for it, and go to death, because they believed it, no. it so much. Was a pope himself ever accused of heresy? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Nobody was no, but there were popes that were deposed because of like um, and executed. yeah, and ex immoral lifestyle, or they would be appointed by somebody that was another a king somewhere, and then somebody would dispute it, and then well, they there was would be, two popes. A and, yeah, times there were two popes at least twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just saw a documentary this yesterday that that had the following line in it, and the crowd watched in horror as the Holy Father gave birth. <coughs> I think she was a. Oh, <laughs> I don't. Pope Joan. I don't know that one. Oh, she said Pope uh, Joan. Okay. She, was a, she okay. was a lady dressed up like a guy. She okay. made it to the. Did that really happen? I don't think so. No. no? Okay. No, not that I know of. The Holy Father didn't give birth. Not that. That no. would be a miracle. No. I, no. And, and were, were the Jews targeted by the Inquisition, or was that really just the Crusades that? The no, they were targeted by the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, the Spanish Inquisition. Spanish Inquisition was it was basically Big a pogrom. They got rid of them. Yeah. But again, yeah, it was they were targeting supposedly these Christians. Well, they were targeting conversos. Yeah, Jews who had converted. Yeah. They did both. They said, yeah. get out if you're a Jew, if you want to live. Remember. Yeah. And was then that? they also went after the converted. Yeah. It was both. But I'm trying to understand, was that really from the Inquisition, or was that just the general political <clears throat> movement of the time? It was both. Because Ferdinand and Isabella, that's why I don't agree with Henry Common, the historian, because uh, they, they were, a lot of those Spanish monarchs were very fanatic about was, religion. And that's an example of yeah. someone who I think they brought that Inquisition in. Now, were they sitting around saying, oh, darn, we might get some riches off of this? That's not good. Well, no. I think it was both. But though. I think they were very, if I, in fact, I read some, I mean, she was they, extremely they were, they religious were very and fanatic. fanatical. They both yeah. were. And they did this because they thought this was how the yeah. best thing for Spain and the later and Phillips did also. They were also very fanatic. So it's, it was everything, you know. Yeah. The old Catholic aristocracy resented the Jews because they were doing so well, and they they, so they didn't, them out. They didn't stand up for them when Ferdinand no. and Isabella said, "Hey, let's do some inquisitioning no. around here." Nobody no. stood up for them. And Ferdinand, it was a clever political move to align himself with the old Christian aristocracy. And if you were a Christian who converted, say, to Islam, would you be killed by the Inquisition? Oh yeah, yeah, because you, you, were, you were inherit. You know, you were, you were an apostasy, so they would accuse you of heresy and apostasy, most likely. And they might even throw blasphemy in for good, <laughs> for good measure. Definitely, though, apostasy and heresy. So an apostate is just someone who denounces. Uh, Belief system. Yeah, who leaves their You know, the, the Latin the root of the word apostate is there, a runaway Greek. slave. Yeah, I've read that, but also yeah. it just kind of also means to discard, too. Mm -hmm. And, and that is a Greek but, but word. But I thought runaway slave was pretty juicy. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> one, 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 one interpretation. But the more, the more kind of interpretation is to leave or separate. Mm -hmm. And that's from the Greek. And don't ask me to say the Greek word because this, even though I'm a Greek, I'm not very good with the ancient Greek. And, and were, were there theologians that tried to put the Inquisition on some kind of theological basis? Oh, sure. Continuously. But, but you didn't really go into that. So 
No, I, I didn't, you know, the, the time limits, but I think you'll see in later lectures as I talk about, you know, heresy and things, what theologians had to say about it. Because I approach heresy then from a different angle, um, which is theological. That's and the development of, of how the church developed the idea of heresy through the centuries. Again, just right. like doctrine. This is the thing, you know, um, there's a lot of contemporary thinkers that say, and they're right, that um, orthodoxy creates heresy, but heresy also creates orthodoxy. Because if you're fighting a position, you know, you're saying this is they not right. Mm -hmm. Then you have to, yeah, like, we'll examine back. your position and work out all the rationale for it. Mm -hmm. So your orthodoxy is being created all the time mm -hmm. in response to these heresies. I mean, why do we think that um, Jesus and the Holy Spirit have the same nature as God? Then you've got to sit down and write, like, tons and rounds of it. And there's like famous church fathers that we read now, like Origen, and some of his works were uh, burned after he died because they were considered heretical. He believed kind of in a form of reincarnation, which was like not really like the Buddhist or whatever. So there, some of their works were heretical, and you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're not supposed to read these things. They wrote realms, and they were respected, and now they're respected again, of course. Hey Mary, I got a question about, uh, it's kind of about evolution, natural selection, artificial selection. You might ask Jim, man. You know, when you, when you, right now. You know, it's still on subject. You go back to the Cain and Abel story, and I know I mentioned that before, but the bad guy kills the good guy, and we're left to be descended from the bad guy. And <laughs> although a lot of bad or people were hurt and so forth, there's a longer term effect that if you were brought in front of the Inquisition, and you had no integrity, and you lied, you were set free, and you could reproduce. But if you were honest, mm -hmm. and told the mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. you were burned. Mm -hmm. oh, so, that's well, yes, yes and no, no, but you know what? You because were, they would yeah. run you through tests, yeah. and they would say, because they were on to that trip, yeah. right? So no, they would run through completely unscientific tests where if I, you know, the whole throwing the witch in the water thing. Well, yeah, they I would, can't think of they would ones, torture you until you admitted that you, that you actually yeah. were. No, or they would simply hard say, to get away. Once they you were in their we clutches. have a secret, to, we have this way of testing and yeah. if this person does this and yeah. they would make them do it some, I mean, they, they had all sorts yeah. of things. So it wasn't just it. liars then that survived, it was, um, it was I think people the, who passed away. Some of them got survived by getting bought off and smuggled out. Well, yeah, once wow. in a so while. But once you were in the clutches of the, of the Inquisition, you were pretty you much were finished. You were gone. Yeah. You were just lucky if you weren't burned at the stake. But you were going to, you would come, you would have some punishment. It was Which not is the, the and you would almost it, definitely be tortured. It. Unless you just confessed right away that you were a heretic. Actually, and that was the, the really thing good. that you won. If you just went ahead and confessed right away, yeah. and then agreed to recant, Can't, they would yeah. kill you nicely. Yeah, uh, or they wouldn't kill you at all. They would most of the time, they would prison. just kill you nicely and yeah. set up the torture. But the yeah. other guy that gets to survive is the guy who falsely accused mm -hmm. the guy with integrity yeah. to get his business. So that guy survives. Mm -hmm. Well, the sometimes hard worker dies, they, the liar if lives, it could be proved that they had done it, they, they would get punished also. It was tricky. I mean, everybody got punished somehow. Or yeah. oh, really? The, the people who turned them in? Yeah. The false sometimes witness. the people yeah. who turned false them in. False witness. No, I, yeah. I think Greg is raising an important mm -hmm. question, is that from an evolutionary point of view, who would survive to carry on to the next generation? <laughs> the liars. The same <laughs> traits. Oh, yeah. Statistically. Genetically. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Whatever okay. would have been passed on. Who, who were those people? There were, had to be some of them. They didn't kill everybody. Well, survivors. But, but so what traits did they have? that might have been passed on to the next generation. Cowardice. <laughs> yeah. Could be cowardice, so, could be cunning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the larger sense, religion creates evil. Sure. Well, well that's yes. a moral, yeah, that's yeah. a moral judgment. Yeah. Uh, you could but say it's true. That yeah. it, it creates people who are cunning, yeah. who are liars, yeah. who are... Uh, maybe Hypocrites. Yeah, Hypocrites, maybe, for sure. yeah, maybe <laughs> stupid people, maybe people that are just too dumb to get themselves into any kind of yeah. trouble. Yeah, that's artificial selection and it's 
Yeah, in purest form, right? Well, they yeah. also did get rid of quite a lot of feeble-minded people at the English Yeah, they, too. yeah of course. That yeah. was another... Why would they get rid of them? Atheists? They were... <laughs> <laughs> no, not them. They were um, considered... I mean, they were... If, there was the devil inside them. That's yeah. why they were retarded. Oh, yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Is that, that part of the Inquisition? Almost, that, I don't yes. know if Exorcism. it was really part of it. I think that when, once they started... Killing and, and burning they and just imprisoning. Put everybody. It in just the pot. everybody got. You yeah, know. the machine wanted customers. Yeah, yes. yeah it was a machine. Yes. Thank you, and it just ground mm -hmm. everybody. It's kind of like the Nazis originally went after Jews, but yeah. then let's throw in some gays and gypsies yeah. and the whole gang because we don't yeah. like any of them. Yeah. It's yeah. the same deficient. thing. And our own citizens. Yeah. Eugenics. Yeah. yeah. Mentally deficient. Yes. So what? So what about like sexual misconduct? Would that have been subject to the inquisitors? Well, only if that was like more uh, during the witch hunts. That was much later. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, a little bit later because that would be like coming under the auspices of probably the devil had um, encouraged you to do this, and you had probably been seduced by the devil or what have you, and then you know you were like. But just adultery, run of the mill adultery, would that have been? No, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have sent you to burning, but there would. That would probably be. I don't know if it would be just the church courts or if it would be the secular. I'm not sure. Because well, masturbation, you do that. <laughs> or I mean, only any, anything like that was like, you know, very, very wrong. But, you know, remember the peasants were doing all kinds of things like that. Yeah, so it, it is a little bit interesting, given our day and age, that the inquisitors didn't really seem to go after sexual deviancy so-called deviancy. That they did during the witch hunts. But so it was later. Yeah. I'm just, is that because we just don't have records or because they really, at that time, weren't focused on that? They weren't, they weren't focused on that. You know, it was, it was always a focus, of course. You know, I mean, you weren't supposed to commit adultery or, you know, sexual, you know, indiscretions and what have you. But heresy was really much worse. It seems though that if, at that Power time, but during the witch hunts, then, the sexual behavior that was like at yeah. all, you know, not, you know, straight sex all the time was like really, really bad. Yes. You would be, you would be probably be burned or, you know, sent and, to prison. And then naturally women would be the targets. Oh yeah, and women were, you know, women, at that time of, there was, e there were economic difficulties and a lot of women had to just take to the road if they weren't married or if their husband had died. And um, they were always being accused of infanticide, and you know, and this was all like the snares of the devil, and the, you know, it's because they were perhaps witches, or you know, it, it was it was a very ugly period for women, when all they were trying to do was like survive. Survive, right? And some women were killing children that they gave birth to, because they had no way to provide for them. And still do. Yeah. But if they caught you at it, I mean, you know, you were you were put in the prison usually, or burned as a witch. A lot of times, prison. But did it, did inquisitors, if power is an aphrodisiac, and inquisitors were very powerful. Oh yeah. Weren't Fun. they doing adultery? And I mean, I would think. Uh, a lot of priests were, as I was reading, a lot of priests were doing all kinds of things, you know. Yeah. But that was a little different. <laughs> you wouldn't want to persecute what you're doing, though. No. Yeah. Well, they did. They, they would did. do that. They would do that because they, they weren't doing it, so to speak. <laughs> but so, so these people who were the prosecutors or the interrogators, were they priests or were they laymen? Oh, they were priests. They were priests. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or what is the one above? Not cardinals. Deacon? Or? No, deacons aren't. I think they were just plain imp inquisitors, you know, that had reached a certain stage. Okay. But in order to be, path. you had to at least be a priest, is what you're saying. Oh, I yes. thought that one guy, who'd you name, what was the one guy? Torquemada. I thought yeah. he was a cardinal. Oh, he probably was, yeah. Okay. But that would be like the Inquisitor General. Okay. Yeah. Not just the active he, hanging no, out. No, I mean, the, the, the guys... The Inquisitor. You know, yeah, the guys that went <laughs> out, there were usually two of them. Okay. And then with their, with their entourage, you know, except during the Roman, because the Roman, they stayed mainly in one place, you know, whatever city. And so do we have any writings from critics of the Inquisition during the Inquisition period? Was yeah, there like... were some, but it was just like the same as the witch hunts. You know, uh, if you spoke against them, you, you know, even, one. you know, then you were accused of, you know, being in league with the devil. So 
There weren't. Um, trying to remember which. Oh, great. Uh, Hillary. Hillary was, uh, I think, was he in Spain? I can't remember. He was, um, he was a theologian. and No, Hillary Poitier, I think. Well, anyway. Anyway, he had a very eloquent and moving statement about that, um, you know, we're touching on matters that should be, you know, like within the soul and within the heart and by bringing, well, but still, but bringing up these questions and accusing people, you know, we're, you know, he was saying essentially that they were doing like, you know, a bad thing, a wicked thing. And of course, nobody listened to him. And he was a theologian. Was he prosecuted? No. No, he was not. No. No. But yeah, I mean, the argument could be made is we'll just leave them to God, right? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Well, I God think that that's punch. what he meant. Like, we're, we're starting to persecute and torture people, and we're bringing up things that maybe belong to God and, and to the person's soul and, and not, should not be spoken of. He said matters that should not be spoken of aloud. Which I thought was actually kind of nice, I mean, mm -hmm. when, I, when I read this statement. And, and um, he really longed for the days when the church he thought was innocent, which I never think it was. Yeah, perhaps. what day was that? Yeah, one, one day maybe. Right. Yeah, one day. But, you know, he wanted the, more of the simplicity mm. and what have you, and, and less of the persecution. I mean, he was like very orthodox in his thinking, but he just, he didn't like all that, that persecution. Well, Martin, I think uh, Francis of Assisi, it's odd because his order, you know, worked so much with the Dominicans, but Francis thought that they should try persuasion rather than persecution with heretics. But the church was already persecuting the Cathars even before he died. And then his order really helped the Dominicans really badly. So when you get this idea of the holy Franciscans that just love nature and poverty and you know, torture. the birds and the bees, <laughs> they, they, they were torturers. Too. They were right there helping the Dominicans. Yeah, That's well, very sad, I think. Good times. You know, yeah, you didn't mention that the, the type of environment that these priests would have grown up in would just sort of encourage that kind of sadistic anti-life perspective, right? If you, you, you're denying all of the worldly pleasures, you know, to yourself, and, and you're constantly uh, confronted. Right, those were monks. The priests yeah. didn't yeah. necessarily, no, no. On that, those, well, some the priests did. did not necessarily, it depends on the yeah, order. The some of the priests were living the some, high life, but yeah, there, were, more. Uh, there were a lot of theologians that, you know, when Christ talked about sinning, you know, in, in your heart, they really took it seriously and they would write about it and they would like, tr they would be like tormented for days if they would go out and be tempted by, you know, some attractive woman. Yeah. Out there, they got to the point where they almost some of them almost wished that you know women didn't exist, or they saw them as real uh, evil, evil, mm -hmm. like you know, in league with Satan to tempt them. I mean, they were like so. Origen castrated himself, mm. you know. So I mean, they were so focused on you know. <laughs> That's commitment. But I mean, they were so focused on on not having sinful thoughts. Yeah. So I, I'm just taking them at their word here. Not that, I'm not speaking of the corrupt priests, but th those priests who really believe this stuff. Yeah, they just took sort it of very seriously. Into that. Yeah, they took mm -hmm. it very Wouldn't seriously. that be the logical outcome of that sort of pathology of, well, I have to kill someone else because I'm afraid of those same impulses in sure. me. I have to sure. kill it. By killing someone else. Yeah, absolutely. That's good That's psychology. Good. Right. I was just going to say, go down all the psychological <coughs> mental illnesses and you'll probably get <laughs> yeah. every manifestation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> just, yeah. It's all psychological. It's yeah, terrifying when you think how many years it went on. Yeah. Five Hundreds years. of years. I mean, Hundreds. just think about that. No, what's even more terrifying is it was, I mean, in the 1700s before it was done in Spain, and 1800s. And 18, about 1800. And even in the, yeah. it's just that, it's like That's crazy. really scary. So yeah. why did Napoleon abolish the Inquisition? Probably Power. pressure, and, and remember he was part of the, you know, he was supposed to be part of the Enlightenment, which he really wasn't. Right. But, I mean, a lot of people idealized him at first, so I think it was probably a good political move. It was also a power move because yeah. he didn't want the yeah, church he didn't in want, power. He didn't he want the church in power. That good point, Reese. Yeah. So it wasn't out of ideology or no. this idea of justice. No. 
No, but it looked very good. And quit killing off my soldiers. I have a different. Remember, idea remember, the Enlightenment yeah. was very anti-clerical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was a good time to, you know, like say, this is it. You know, we're not going to like kill people anymore for, you know. But had, yeah. So, but had he not been a dictator, he couldn't have gotten away with that. Oh, absolutely no. not. So no. it's interesting how sometimes the dictatorships work in the yeah in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of history. If I were to go to Italy today, would I be able to see any surviving buildings that were that were built specifically for? The Inquisitors? Yeah, the building is still there. It would be the one that burned down and yeah. rebuilt? In, yeah, they, yeah they rebuilt it. It's still there, the, the building, the, inqui the Inquisition, the building. Interesting, because I would love to see that, just to get a feel for what that might have been like. Mm -hmm. Just a building. That's yeah, toward, I mean, toward the end in Rome, it was more like you said, book burning and office space. It was bureaucratic. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. the whole torture dungeon chamber thing going yeah. on anymore. Yeah, that wasn't that, that wasn't point. going on. They didn't leave the racks. There well, they had anything. prisoners there. Yeah, things, but it wasn't. But, yeah, that. it wasn't that. I mean, I'm sure that they had instruments of torture, but. Well, I think that's where the customer service people work now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's where the CDF works mm -hmm. and tries to figure out, you know, like. What theologian is? So, in. yeah, I mean, what what would uh, Pope uh, Francis say about um, the Inquisition today? If I if I said, uh, you know, how oh, how can you excuse the Inquisition? They every don't. They apologize for every single crap. Pope what is would, asked for over every time they come in, everyone's asked. But yeah. what would they say then? They, they apologize for it, and they think it's a dark. That was a dark, a dark time, time in our history. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even get me started on yeah. Pope Francis. So they wouldn't Such try to say, BS. you know, we were just trying to keep people in line. They they would they would be more contrite than that. They're not that contrite. They're just very contrite that it was a dark time in their history and that the church has learned. So just a sort then. of a vague apology. Yeah. Well, I thought they said it was a dark time in our history. history. Yeah, actually, it wasn't my a dark history. time in yeah. In <laughs> and us humans. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we just believed more, it wouldn't have happened. They, they they do the same thing about how they cooperated with the Nazis mm -hmm. about the Jews. Oh, that was really not a good hand. They're just we're sorry. That was a bad time. Yeah, in our my bad. We didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so bad time. That's a, yeah, that's Take another back. topic of actually of debate, but I won't I won't get into that right now. <laughs> um, you mentioned that uh, the clergy were not supposed to hunt. No, they weren't supposed to do why, things like that, but that? they did. Why, why wouldn't they hunt? Well, it's like taking of life or taking whatever. Life. Plus, it's the... Plus, um, it's taking you away from your congregation. You're away from your congregation. What are you doing, like, going on these hunts? And plus, it's an expensive sport. So it was considered You needed sport. to have a horse or have somebody rich get, lend you a horse. You had to have an outfit to hunt. Hunting is very okay. expensive. So it, it wasn't like, you know, so, sort of a folk... Uh, Hunting, where you just go out to, to get your next meal. It oh no no like no! That. This is like you no, know those is, mounted horse things. For like entertainment. They, like yeah, yeah, yeah. they were they still do in England. Go on the hunt yeah. versus hunting. Yeah, you could yeah. go out and shoot with a gun. Yeah, okay. if you needed some food or right. something. Right, but they yeah. don't shoot some heretics. The hunt. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. shoot yeah. heretics. Convenient and tasty. Yeah. It's like chicken. Yeah, it was it was the whole idea of the. The wealth and the thing, oh. and away from the, as Jim said, away from the congregation, your curatorial duties or whatever. Um, I, I was very fascinated about all the book, the threats that the church perceived, which were very real threats. There were. They of were the real. rise of the book technology, of book publishing, yeah. And, printing. yeah. and so, would you care to make a prediction about how the internet would be is going to be viewed, say, fifty to hundred years from now, in terms of changing? Or challenging religious belief, what at what level of revolution would you put that at? Boy, don't ask me for would a you compare prediction that to on that because there's so many, you know, sites on religion. Yeah, I was just all over say, the web. Yeah, it's you can a, any crazy if you you can find any crazy group you want. Yeah, that you can fit yeah. in with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. so and does that false mean, information about creationism, abortion. Mm -hmm. So does you that know, mean it has abundant? It's abundant. So that, that would say it has actually less impact than the book printing of the 15th century would have. That the internet ultimately wouldn't be as powerful because of all the other nonsense that's on, on the web. Mm, good question. Or, or would it be more powerful because 
you know, finally like-minded people would be able to gather well, in a greater number. Well, there's that, too. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, look well, how many people we were just talking about. If you if you don't find, if you can't find atheists on the web, you right. know, you, you, know yeah. you must be in a cave mm -hmm. or If you're something. questioning yourself, you can find. Yeah, yeah, if you want but to. I would think back in the Gutenberg days there, you had to have resources to publish your ideas. And now anybody yeah. with a half a thought and internet access can yeah. publish and whatever the heck they want. should make yeah. it more scary. It would make it, I would think, less reliable. And more scary. For but still, when you think about what they were printing back then, who had resources? The church and the yeah. printing Bibles. That's sure. also what I consider Wait, no, not reliable. Wait, no, the church reliable. wasn't printing Bibles. Well, they, they, weren't, they weren't printing Bibles. They didn't want people to read them. No, the church uh, was not printing Bibles. But they would print, you know, theological things and, yeah. and explanations and what have you. So it, took the it was available to everybody to that wanted to Bibles. use it, the printing presses. And that was actually, who was, oh, who was it? Damn, the names. Anyways, mm -hmm. when they started, act, someone actually started writing the he, it wasn't he got into Luther. big trouble. He yeah, got huge much trouble. much later, he translated. Yes. It to oh yeah. Yes. It was, it was <laughs> one of Wesley. He started one of the, the one of the yeah. damn big religions. Was it Wesleyan? Yeah. Or, it was. I can't remember which one it was. Which one was it? Yeah. But he started one of the big religions, yeah, and yeah. he was one of the first yeah. ones that actually started writing, yeah. or printing the Bible. And yeah. Which one was it? I can't remember. Trouble for them. Oh, huge. Oh, well, drummed out of his country. Huge. So so. Nobody here is willing to speculate, or maybe this is too far off topic, of whether well, the internet ultimately topic. would be a force against religion or would just be a, a neutral uh, effect on religion. I my think my it's thinking neutral. is it would, it's just a continuance. It's, just, it's a continuance. It's a continuance. It just it balances uh, out because the neutral. opposition is there, yeah. and the pro-religion is there. It's just spreading like this. Norm, who is that lady that's from what country? Hungary or what? Where, where did she come from? She was at the Reason Rally. Ba Bangladesh. No, no, you're thinking the. I'm thinking of the attractive blonde lady that has a, a website. She was at the atheist. Well, that she, was at the yeah. she was at the Reason Rally. She was at the Reason Rally. You're getting these mixed up. <laughs> She's at the Reason Rally. Yeah. It, was it the doc, the woman that is associated with Dawkins, no. that runs the? Um, no. Not her. Okay. No, it's hmm. not. It's the not Dawkins the Foundation. No, no, Dawkins no, Foundation. no. She, she what, what, what is the what is the point? Yeah. Well, I her, her the point is that she has a website and she she made a joke about in her country if you had a meeting of atheists. Like, you know, like probably one person would come, like her, and then two members of the secret police, you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And oh, it's such a religion. Talking. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, she's about. A, a vlogger. She's a vlogger. Of she, okay, she's vlogger. a vlogger. Okay, but she's, she's very followed. I mean, people know her. She's Bulgaria very popular. Bulgaria or Romania, yeah. Yeah, no. Hungary, Hungary, Hungary not, or not Romania. Not even Hungary. It's, for it's, some, it's one of the countries. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, but she's really quite popular. I mean... Yeah. Her work. I know who you're talking about. So, I mean, you know, if you want to reach her, it's very easy to reach people like that mm -hmm. now on the web. And mm -hmm. she can reach out in a country that's like mainly Christian and right. she's like very, mm -hmm. very, very much in the minority. She can reach out and she has this large audience. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. But it yeah. seems to me that the, the web in general, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just <coughs> kind of agree with uh, Jim that uh, um, People seek what nourishes them. They, they go after what it exactly. is they want. Mm -hmm. and, and everything is possible on the web. And when you look at what are the most hit on sites, then you reveal something about the psyche of the population, I think. Cute pictures yeah. of dogs. Was, so, <laughs> yeah. And movie stars in there. Yeah, movie stars. And, uh, yeah. 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 By the way, but they're the divorces. Record, Tyndale. Was the first Tyndale, yeah. That's what it was. Well, he put it in the English Bible. I had the key, yeah. right? English Bible. He was, um, but he was, um, the book was banned and he was executed because of it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Mm. That's right. But he well, that happened kind of went on all the English time. Bible. You didn't that's fool around with no the sense, Bible. No sense of humor like Muslims or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't get us started about Muslims. Yeah, we'll have another lecture on that. But that's but, also uh, uh, so, thing you know. so, okay, so a raise of hands is that the internet is a neutral force. How many would say it would be a neutral force against religion? It's, 
it balances itself out. I well, I think it's it's cancels. It's cancels. Yeah, that's, that's, so neutral. You're, that's, that's neutral. neutral. Three. neutral. I'm gonna vote for so all three. Wow, well, I'm totally <laughs> out. I voted. So no, well, I, I think, think it's of course gonna, against religion. All right, say why? Why? Well, before, for all before the same we start reasons, torturing uh, you, uh, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for all the same reasons as the book publishing business is that, yeah, because of the access to information, the access to, to dissent, the the ability to quickly uh, publish ideas against the power structure, you know, that prevails at that mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and to reach the masses in ways that you would never have been able to before, which I think all of you agree, but you don't you don't go far enough to say that'll be a tipping point, that'll be something that will balance out the crazies. You're also publishing a course. Well, they are balancing out the crazies the already. In but, a way. But, if, but if you believe that ultimately we're right and they're wrong, then the availability of, of more information is only going to be to our benefit, not to theirs. Mm -hmm. If they're wrong, then all you need is just, well, not all you need, but having more information is going to be ever more on our favor than on their favor. <laughs> Possibly, is, is but people are continuously right? putting out stuff on <laughs> ID and Because I'm going to still on neutral, faith. but I'm going to hope you're right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we all well, hope that. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a good hope. I mean, but I, 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 I see what's happening. I can see, I can see where you're going on. with that. But the religious, devoutly religious people are putting it out there. I, of it's course. It's just all over. It's and the people who want to go with that are going to go with that. And the people yeah. who are teeter tottering will mm, come back over toward your point of view. But if I'm a 14 year old boy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my parents. You're looking up porn. You're not looking up <laughs> yeah, anything exactly. else. Yeah. The right. 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 porn is a force against religion, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like, all yes, these people no. are no. yeah, I don't know. A lot of those people like that <laughs> look at porn and things, yeah. you know, are religious. Well, but, but you see, but it breaks okay. the hold. It, it, even in their own private bedroom, mm -hmm. they're corrupting themselves, it's breaking the hold of their no, religion. I oh, no, know, because you know, I think hypocrisy is firmly entrenched yeah. in many religion. people and will never, yeah. ever, ever, ever be dislodged I by agree. any rational argument whatsoever. Do you remember mm -hmm. us but, telling you that... But it can't that further the goals of the church by yeah, watching who's gonna know? Our that son used to be a Navy officer and for a while he was, you know, like uh, in the, what do you call them, the uh. Emirates. The Emirates. Oh, right. Right. Emirates. Yeah. yeah, and Emirates. you know things are a little more open there, and what have you. And he said that the, the, the from the strict country, so oh, they people come in would rows. Rows over the border, and they would live it up all weekend. Any kind of vice that you can possibly think of, and then you know they go back. Now, do you think that they were gonna like pretend? You know, I mean, you think that they yeah, were gonna say like anything. I'm now liberal? Because you know what? Then they'd have to go back and set all their women free, and that yeah. would happen. What are, yeah, no, but you know, they're all just no. watching nun porn. Nun porn. No, they're going for hardcore. But but don't you think that ultimately that is a corrupting influence? I'm I'm not saying it happens. Even no, I agree. Corrupt. Because Come on, because you're acting like they haven't. Like this is the first time in the last ten years they discovered sex over there. Please. They have been going outside of their own country and their own yeah. whatever to get what they can get yeah. whenever Sleeping they want to get it. And in their own country, they have prostitutes. Forever. They have so, prostitutes In their own there. country. Yeah. Where so are the, pro where are the been prostitutes? There's no progress there? towards our side in that time? No. No. No, no because they're big hypocrites. What do you think yeah. the Southern Baptists that. have been doing for years? They've been going over the border and drinking and, you know, living it up Gay when they're sex. in a dry county. and. And then they're going back on Monday morning or Sunday night or whatever. So true. But, but yeah. I mean, even if uh, just pick Saudi Arabia, I mean, w women have that much little more rights than they did, say, 50 years ago. Well, yeah, eventually. Is that, that because it, it's that much? The, but it's well, it's going to happen. It's going to happen it's, yeah, slowly. Eventually. What is it? But because slowly. It, it's the, pr the march of time. Yeah. The, you, you know, well, they don't like, China. also, they don't like to be, um, what's his name? Um, Appel, I think, the the ethicist, he says that people don't like to be ridiculed. Countries don't like to be ridiculed. Yeah. And, and ashamed. Bring them into the light. So, Shame. yeah, so eventually, you know, he said that this is like what stopped foot binding in China, you know, the world. Laugh you know, and yeah, them. laughed and but put that's them not, down. That wasn't just, the internet foot binding. Same thing with slavery, you know. But it was yeah, but anyway, he said that. Interaction that was happening. You know, so no, this is what cause, I think is going to happen slowly with the Arab countries. So they're, they're not going to like Islam. Possible. They're not going to like being put down because of the women. 
and slowly the women will get rights, but really slow. Really slow. Really slow. Yeah. Really slow. Right? We yeah. were just saying we were out in Somerset this weekend, and we saw about 20 women that, that you Bail. know, were wearing, you know, the, the broken. Well, four of them. Four, four of them were I'm black. Sorry, four women, that's right. Four, four, to, four to ceiling. And yeah. one slap for the eyes. One that just was the full yeah. burka. This is Somerset yeah. Mall. Can you yeah, Somerset them? Mall. Yeah. I mean, but on the other hand, they, they do have burkinis. Sweating. Pardon? They do have burkinis now. <laughs> now I'm serious. A Muslim gal told me that when I visited well, her mosque. They, that's what they wear at the beach, a burkini. Well, they, they, they're, supposed, they're supposed to be covered, but at, in their own private but homes, if they have now, pools and things, they can wear... You know, they wear bikinis and stuff when they're in their as own... As long as there's nudity, there's the Yeah, when they're in their own yeah. territory, mm -hmm. they wear all kinds of European fashions so and what right. have you. Uh, oh. Back to the... Uh, Do you have any more? Uh, more? Well, you know, I, 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 I don't want to be uh, Pollyannish about this, but, but if you look at the arc of history, because we covered about 700 years. Sure. You, when you said the Inquisition. Yeah. And, it, and it, you look at the end of that, the end of that was the book publishing. Was, was this pub publishing yeah. of books? Well, I think well, the wait, web is going wait. to help. I mean, when you know, was the Gutenberg Press? Oh my God! In the middle well, of the 15th, 15th century. century. So that wasn't that wasn't yeah. 700 years. And, yeah, that was not. 700. But okay, so 300 years. I don't know what you said. 1200, the Inquisition uh, yeah. began under Gregory the Ninth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, to to the point. To about 1800. When, yeah. when the printing press had a large impact. Yeah. You know, so. All I'm saying is that if you look at it from that point of view of, say, a, a couple hundred to three hundred years of, of the Internet access, <laughs> can you imagine? I can't see how the religious could could still be the dominant, could be the majority. I just, well, they probably said, will be, but I well, I, we keep growing. Yeah. <laughs> we keep growing. We're, the nuns are 20%. Yeah. Now, of course, they're not all atheists. But when the historians look Gnostics, back... But and say, what was it about the 21st century that suddenly all of these nuns grew? Where, well, where did these some of it is the general secularity, I think, of society. But yeah. but that but but, but there the the, but there you do have the web. I mean, look at if you're yeah. if you're a young person and you're in an isolated community in Pakistan, and you've got the yeah, or even in the United States. Okay, you know, my son said that some of the kids that were coming into the Navy, they didn't realize there was another alternative. They really just didn't get it. Which is astounding, because you're right, it's all so easy yeah. to access. Yeah, but they, he said that, but remember, he was an officer a long time ago, we see, now the web is so. here, and now we have it, and we take it for granted, but he said that these kids did not realize they had an alternative of, of but belief. But they still don't. So if we, as, well, as a... Even do. with the web, they well, don't. Well, see, but you can, yeah. you can... You can tune in and you can find out there's other people like you. See, if, if the majority of people you can, but want it and need it, if that's something fundamental to the design of humanity, it's going to persist. That's what's scary. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's scary. We have mm -hmm. the ability now to step away from it. We have more information than we ever mm -hmm. had. Those books that were being printed were very limited subject matter way back when. But and now secularity it's does grow. It does grow. I mean, it's slow, but it's certainly more pervasive than it was, you know, even 200 years ago, even 100 years ago. So Maybe. we're there's we're going to be a substantial group. I don't know if we'll be in the majority, but we're going to be a very strong mm -hmm. minority at some point. If we're our gonna, water doesn't run out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if we can, is, if we can get together, which we seem too. not to be able to, if we can get together and exert political pressure, that would be terrific. That's the that's the big one. Political pressure Having to the political eliminate. clout. To eliminate religion. No, not to eliminate religion. Well, I don't want to eliminate anybody's right atheists. to belief if they want to damn believe. I mean, that's their yeah. their business. But I think for to get first of all, we always have to go to court to get our rights. Continuously. Mm -hmm. Continuously. I mean, mm -hmm. read my atheism and the law. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a very visited a section on atheist yeah. scholar. The whole thing about then they cause us to waste money as groups. Well, it's not that, and there's somewhere, I think, the pe there's going to be a, you can't continue to say you have the right to your religion, no matter what it is, including circumcising your girls, well, and no. including, Boys. and what I mean, that's and boys, and boys, <laughs> sorry, and boys, um, 
But that's starting to, I mean, it's going to, that's what's going to take, but I think is going to chip away at it. Yeah. Because at some point someone's going to say, wait a minute, Amish people, you can't not, you can't stop educating your kids right. at eighth grade and then act like, oh sure, we let them leave if they want. What? They don't even know how to leave. Yeah, they don't know how to leave. They can't I mean, leave. You've terrifying. already, I mean, you've created They're slaves. isolated. Yeah. They're isolated. Mm -hmm. And so it's back to your yeah. internet thing. They ain't going to help any of the Amish. But, yeah, but you see, the well, Amish understood that very early on, right? Yeah, the technology, that's why they isolated themselves. Yeah. From that's right. It was yeah. going to take people But I mean, away. the point is, at some point, we're going to say, wait a minute, freedom of religion or your children are slaves? Well, see, this what is the problem, the gonna... children's rights. Yeah. Right, and when, but so I mean, chipping away, circum chipping away at those things is where I think yeah. it's going to start making the difference, where we say, you know what, that's like slavery. That's yeah. child That's all fine and dandy, and, and at what that's point, your religion. Yeah. But we yeah. don't allow that That's as child a child But at yeah. what point yes. is there is it possible for an inquisition to work its way into the internet? Is that possible? I don't think so, Jim. Uh, no, no. I don't think so. No, it's not possible. You'd have to shut down. Maybe Congress. when there's wor a worldwide in China. Yeah. Worldwide government. They keep doing it in China and yeah. it doesn't work very well. You know, the whole thing about kids, uh um, being perverted at a young age. If we could just get a law passed saying that mind abortions are illegal. Because <laughs> that's kind of what it sounds like. I mean, yeah. we always fight the physical, or there's a whole yeah. movement to fight the physical abortion, but come on, you're, you're removing yeah. potential when you yeah. say, Child if anybody talks about evolution, you're going to hell, so don't listen to them. Well, I'm sure. Well, look at all the people that take their kids to the creation museum <coughs> and they tell them it's fact. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much for a very interesting discussion.